There is a world. There is a world. There is a world. Just on the other side of the one we know. It speaks to us in signs and synchronicities, uncanny coincidence, and encounters with that which we believe to be impossible in the realms we call our own. Listen closely, Night Owl. These are transmissions from the abyss. From the abyss. As someone who has crisscrossed the U.S. time and again, N. Conley is well aware of the weird undercurrents that run under the surface of the cultural mainstream. From an early age, it seems as though the otherworldly has been in contact with N. through many different faces of the phenomena. From a dogman encounter at a New Jersey Boy Scout camp and a spectral disembodied head on a bookshelf in his childhood room to a pair of glowing red eyes watching him from the woods surrounding one of America's most infamous battlegrounds in an experience with something that can only be called demonic in nature, N has been privy to his fair share of the strange and superbly supernatural. On this first episode of our Patreon exclusive series, we discuss all of these eerie ethereal encounters, just why N may be prone to these kind of otherworldly interactions, and so much more with the witness himself, tonight on Midnight in Kentucky's Transmissions from the Abyss. From the Abyss. From the Abyss. Not else. We are here with Ian Conley this evening. Ian, thank you so much for coming on and speaking with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know about what you do, about who you are, about your life, and um, and we'll get into it, man. Yeah, sure. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I'm my name's Ian. Uh, Forty years old. I've uh, lived all over the U.S. You know, moved more times than than I may necessarily want to, but <laughs> I understand you know, that's that. life. <laughs> um, and I've had some pretty, pretty unique experiences, you know, in my travels. And, um, you know, that's a kind of a, kind of a blessing in, in my opinion, you know, cause I mean, there's just, in my, you know, there's just way too much stuff going on in this world that, you know, for us to just definitively say, no, there's nothing there. Or, yeah. Uh, or just like kind of write things off, you know, um, I feel like we need to, really take back and take it seriously instead of, you know, but I guess, uh, mainstream science just want to <laughs> check off all the time. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, you said something there that I was actually talking to somebody about today. And it's just the fact that, you know, I think some people view these experiences through the lens of like, you know, negative or, or negative mm -hmm. things happening. And that's definitely a part of it, but also, you know, it's, I think it's important to feel grateful for having these experiences. You're being given a glimpse into something that uh, I don't think a lot of people, you know, even if they see it, they may not engage with it or even believe it, you know? Oh, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, 100% because, um, you know, it's, it's funny when I talk to certain people, um, and they're it, like, I talk to people who are just completely shut off about it. Uh, right, I talk right. to people who, um, are on the fence just because they haven't had an experience yet, but they're open-minded enough to, you know, not shut it out like instantly to just quickly write it off. Oh, that was a Creek or, Oh, no, nope, that was a squirrel in the wall. And, <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So, but absolutely. yeah, it's a uh, great, great, uh, conversations and it, you know, and I have to say it was also without me having these experiences, I would never have made it to CryptidCon, and then I would never have met you. And, you know, it was great talking with you. Exactly, man. Exactly. You know, I make the joke a lot of the time and I was going to say, we met you first at uh, this past year's CryptidCon, stood around and talked mm -hmm. to you for a little bit about uh, your different sightings, which 
uh, once we get into them, man, there's some profound stuff. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I make the joke a lot of the times that maybe the aliens, maybe the cryptids, maybe the monsters were just the friends we made along the way. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, that's and, I, and I, hell, man, if that's all this mysterious thing is, I made a lot of good friends through this. You know what I mean? So exactly. maybe that's what it is, man. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, the first story that you told us to us at Crypticon, man, blew my mind. It was uh, it was intense and deals with one of my favorite cryptids, the dog, man. So uh, without further ado, man, I'll just let you get into it and tell the story. All right. Um, so uh, I'm originally from Delaware and, um, you know, I did Boy Scouts growing up and uh, right our closest summer camp was in Southern New Jersey. And uh, so it was my first year, I'm 11 years old, fired up summer camp away from my parents for five full days. You know, they're <laughs> right. not bugging me. <laughs> you know, I get to just go have fun, hang out with, uh, you know, the kids, you know, doing some scouting stuff. It was just exciting, you know? And um, it was July 4th, the week of July 4th uh, that year. And um, I think it was maybe the second or third night that we were there and a pretty nasty storm rolled in. Um, around, I don't mean to interrupt you, around what mm -hmm. year was this, if you remember? Uh, let's see, 11. So maybe 1990 uh four okay okay i want to say 90s. maybe 19 yeah it was like the early 90s yeah okay cool. you know like i said i'm i'm gonna be 40 in july so <laughs> hey man <Math> isn't... <laughs> <laughs> all i was thinking was is that was a great time for music and pop culture but <laughs> yes i agree it was good times man. absolutely absolutely so so uh july 4th around july 4th of 1994 we'll go with sure okay um yeah. And so we're the, the campsite that we were at, it was like the first campsite coming into the, into the, the, the actual camp where, you know, camp Roosevelt itself. Right. And, um, and they had, I think it was like five Adirondacks and then a few spots for, you know, the, um, uh, the canvas tents that, you know, some of the older kids stayed in. Right. right. And, for those who are not familiar with an, what an Adirondack is, it's like a, a three store or a three walled shelter. Uh, there's two wooden bunk beds built into either side. And then at the back wall, there's like a kind of a, like a large window. Yeah. And so um, I'm on the bottom bunk. I'm looking, I'm sleeping uh, so that my head is towards the big opening and my feet are facing down towards the smaller window. And then I can see out that. Well, the night, I, yeah, like I said, it's like a second or third night, nasty, nasty storm rolls in. And that was something that, you know, unfortunately, the, weirdly enough, it was something that, uh, for a lack of a better term, haunted us. Yeah, for <laughs> uh, sure. Every, every year we were at scout camp, it was it, like always, there was always a bad storm. Interesting. And, uh, Interesting. Yeah, it was weird. Uh, one year we dealt with a hurricane. Jeez. And, yeah. <laughs> Talk about being prepared, man. We're going to train our yeah. Boy Scouts for hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It was a good learning experience. For sure, um, yeah. But um, so I, it's the storm woke me up and I'm looking, looking around and just watching the flash and not really, you know, paying too much attention to, you know, anything in particular, just kind of, sure. you know, gathering, you know, you know, trying to figure out my bearing it's a new environment you know and then you have a nasty storm right you're yeah. young so you know it's, it's a, a little, lot yeah yeah and so like i'm looking out the back window and this was like the longest flash of light lightning that i have ever experienced in my entire life one that it was like you know the good lord above turned on the light switch for a split second and then right. you know flipped it off like it was like day right it was daytime thinking now uh, after this after this event how long would you mm -hmm. say that the flash of light lasted oh at, i i would say honestly 
probably a solid maybe second and a half to two seconds. It was like it was well enough, long enough that I could, you know, I could see, you know, right. it was enough where I could see details. I could, you know, make things out. Um, and I see this thing and it's kind of it's the best way to put it was is is like it's got it's got like the, the like a dog haunched legs in the back mm -hmm. it's it's narrow waist thin thinner legs but then like you know from the hips up to the torso through the shoulders it broadened up a bit um it was like a dark brown maybe a little bit of you know deep red in the fur right. um maybe some black so i mean it was a dark color um and in the split second that the, this flashed, I see this thing and like, it's kind of, it's like walking like as if it's passing by. It was like, in, but it wasn't moving when I saw it. It was like stood still, but it was like in that, you know, like if it was passing by kind of, so it was like a profile right, almost. Right. And so the shoulders were kind of twisted in towards me. The head was looking straight through the window. So I don't know if this thing was looking me in the eyes or just looking in my direction, but it was enough, it was far enough away where I could see the full body, but close enough where I could see details. I could see uh, uh, eye shine, you know, I know it wasn't like glowing. Like I could, you know, I've, I've had some experiences where I seen glowing dots <laughs> sure, in right. the middle of nowhere. And, and it's not, this was eye shine, you know, you drive along country roads enough. You'll, you'll know the difference. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, for sure. It was a, uh, it was a animal like I shine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But it yeah. was nice. It was red. Yeah. You know, it was like a deep, almost like a, like a warm wine. Yeah. Red. Almost like when they show photos of like cheetahs or something, predators, apex predators, mm -hmm. almost like yes. that type of I shine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the lightning flashed, I see this thing it gets dark and then it's maybe a half a second later was another flash of lightning, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it wasn't as bright, but it was bright enough. And this thing was gone. Mind you, it's dumping down rain. You know, you got thunder, you got lightning. So I couldn't really hear, you know, like the rain pouring off the roof of the Adirondack was loud enough. Sure. Yeah, you know, where I, I couldn't really, you know, and, and I'm thinking to myself, what did I just see? And, <laughs> And I'm thinking like, nobody's going to believe me. No, there, there's no way. Right. Right. And, um, the kid that was staying in the bottom bunk on, on the other side, he had seen it. I know he had seen it because like, I look at, you know, I look out the window, it's gone. I'm looking around like, Oh my God, where's this thing at? I noticed that I'm not going to say his name, but the kid, sure. um, you know, he was awake. I could see him being, you know, awake. And I, and I look at him and I, I said, yo, so-and-so, did you, did you see this? And he's kind of like, kind of looks over at me and he, he just didn't say anything. And sure, yeah. from that point on, like any time that I would try to bring it up and just like verify that I wasn't crazy, you know, he would just like, no, nah, he wouldn't respond. He would, it was like I was speaking another language to the kid. You know what I mean? Right. Like he would just walk away. He, he Which didn't is, want any. Oh, sorry. Well, I mean, I was just saying that's interesting in itself because you think if he didn't see it, he would just plainly come out and say, nah, man, you're, you're crazy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's, that's right. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And like that next morning, you know, like that was like the first thing I did. It's like, I got dressed right away and I went back out there. I was like, I, no one's, I got a, you know, like for my own sake and my own sanity, I got to see if this is, you know, if there's foot tracks or mm -hmm, footprints mm -hmm. or anything, you know, hair or, you know, um, something there's gotta be cause something that big, you know, going through, and this is like the summertime. So, you know, you've got green foliage, you know, this right. is, you know, Southern New Jersey is not, you know, the woods of Southern New Jersey is not too far off from Kentucky other than, you know, the mountain, the, sure. like the kind of mountains and, hilly but like the that's what i was gonna say you identical. guys have a very similar uh, atmosphere or environment to our, mm -hmm. our woods yeah 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 yeah. so nothing i couldn't find anything and 
you know, for a long time, um, like I had no idea what it was. I, I had no, like, I knew it wasn't Bigfoot, right. you know, cause it just didn't look like it. You know, it had the, they had the, it had a face like, you know, the shape of like a wolf's head, but like the snout was a little, not as long and narrow, but it was more of like a, like a grizzly bear's snout right. shape. So, but I mean, like it, it was just different, you know, and I was like, I, you know, I, I was into, you know, aliens and, right. you know, paranormal for a long, long, long time. Um, and it just didn't, it just didn't seem to match up. So as a kid, did you think, I mean, you know, as, as when you seen this thing, did it ever, <clears throat> did it ever click like werewolf or, or, uh, anything like that? I, and that's out of sheer ignorance, like yes and no, right, like sure. yes, this kind of looks like a werewolf, but I knew that, you know, werewolves were like a transforming thing or sure. at least from absolutely. the lore. Absolutely. And I was like, that, that's like, I don't know how I feel about Lacan. <laughs> you know what I <laughs> For mean? Sure. Like, ah. For sure. So I didn't sure. jump on that, that bus, you know, and it wasn't until I first, and I'm not, I don't know if I can say this, you know, like list Derek's podcast, but I was on his fan page. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We love monsters among us. They're one of our, uh, <laughs> one of our big shows. And I love Derek, dude. He's such mm-hmm. an amazing host. He straight up, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without him. And I tell him that every time I see him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, oh, absolutely. Right on. Absolutely. So I discover his, his podcast. And then that makes me want to search his Facebook page, you know, right. he makes mention of it. And, and then somebody had posted and i've been trying to i've like even you know up until this point i've been trying to find the uh the artwork like somebody did some fan art uh-huh. and it was it was identical it was like oh it was like somebody drew a picture of what i saw i feel like i remember when he dropped that episode and i feel like i remember that art yeah yeah i want to say it was black and white like a pencil sketch or uh-huh. a pen, you know pen on paper kind of thing and it was it just blew me away. And then it said, you know, dog man. And, and I was like, Oh my God, I think I even commented on it saying, you know, after all these years, you know, you guys were able to finally, you know, somebody was able to, you know, give me an idea of what this is. Absolutely. And then, and then, and then the second kicker to solidify, you know, the dog man was, you know, a, you know, a thing. And it wasn't just like a couple random off chance sightings that people had was, my first scripted con, which was what 2019, I think that was the last one before COVID hit. Yeah, yeah. Um, they had that dog man statue or <laughs> right. you know, figures right next to the Bigfoot. And I right. was like, that is almost exactly what I saw. You know, the, sh- the proportions were a little different, but I mean, it was, you know, very, very similar. Like I'd say, 85 to about 93 percent like almost identical so, so it anybody wasn't... who's seen that sorry oh. i was just gonna say if anybody yeah. had seen that you know that figure that's you know that's the best thing i can you know give you a physical representation of right so, so it wasn't until that crypticon that you really confirmed your suspicions that this is dog man that mm-hmm. what i thought really okay yeah like that solidified it but up to that point, like after I had been, you know, I found out like the kid or whoever it was that said, here's my, you know, drawing of dog man, then that made me go and do digging, you know, into research. And because of it being like a Wisconsin native thing, um, I wasn't like, I wasn't too sure. And then I did the really digging. And I think I showed it to you. I want to say I did. I found the, yeah, we were, we were leaving the the talk of oh um, yeah Geraldine's and, yeah Geraldine's talk and I had found it on my phone. What I found was that sighting in New Jersey, and it was within I think it was like seventy five miles from where I was where I saw it, and then the one sighting in New Jersey, Southern New Jersey, where it was I, I don't know what the I, I could find it again and get you that information so that if you wanted to put a link to it. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. If you can, if you can uh, send that over to me, if you find it, that would be amazing because I do think that there is that connection, especially in that part of New Jersey. There's a lot of 
a lot of weird stuff up there. That's that's and mm-hmm. that's one question I was going to ask you. Um, where and you know, obviously, you don't have to give us the exacts, but where around is the boys the Boy Scout camp located that you saw this thing? Um, so it's Elmer, New Jersey, is the name of the town that it's closest to or in. Okay, cool, cool. What's say that one more time, Elmer? Yeah, Elmer, E L M E R. New Jersey. New Jersey. And you said that there had been two separate uh two separate other sightings of dog men. Mine and which I I I'm gonna report to this thing, to this website once I find it again. But then there was one other. But it, the, the, that was the thing though, is like and we talked about that where it was like, you know, within I think it was 70 miles or something like that, or it was it was quite a short distance. So like for it to have a range of something, right, you know, that's that's pretty plausible because like there's some animals that have, you know, I think it's some of the big cats, like the mountain lions and stuff, like don't yeah. they have a pretty pretty huge oh yeah range? I, you know, I'm I'm sadly, you know, I'm not up to date really on my biological, <laughs> but yeah, I, from what I remember, they have like a hundred mile range, don't they? And like they'll, I think so. they'll change their environments every now and again to to hunt for mm-hmm. food and such. Hmm. I mean, I, I want to say that's pretty accurate, other than um, double checking real quick. Um, but that's but interesting, man, and I like that theory. And and I had forgotten that you and I had talked about that. But that is a really good theory. The fact that you know within seventy miles, you know this thing is seen repeatedly, repeat, you know, and that's mm-hmm. that's a that's that's the hunting ground thing, right? Like that's maybe this is where this thing goes to hunt for its food. It changes its mm-hmm. environment ever so often. Yeah, that's very interesting. Really interesting. And. Uh, and I wanted to touch on something that you guys had mentioned in the last podcast, you know, like, um, I didn't, I don't, I don't think I felt a connection. I do. And I, I'm very cautious about when I say this, cause right. like, I don't want it to be misconstrued. I want to say that I'm, and the best way to put it is mildly sensitive. Like sure. I haven't honed in, like I've had people say, you know, this is something that you could hone in if you took the time i just haven't because i don't want to accidentally invite things in i but understand like, man yeah for sure um but uh but yeah like i didn't get a sense when i saw it it was just more of like shock yeah. than anything like i didn't i it, and believe it or not like i didn't feel fear you know what i mean like it didn't like i it didn't get that like i didn't feel like oh my god this thing wants to you know eat me or you know tear us all this as these kids apart it just i think it was just trying to pass through and you know it just got too close and didn't realize it and you know was just trying to book through camp <laughs> sure. you know what yeah. i mean to get through wherever it needed to go absolutely but, that's interesting man that's that's really interesting um well, first of all, let's touch, let's, if you don't mind, let's touch on that mm-hmm. a little bit. And I know that you're cautious in talking about it and I understand that mm-hmm. completely. Uh, I don't know if you and I had talked about this, but I've always said, um, you know, I think if I sat down and meditated real hard, I could probably mm-hmm. summon a gray alien, <laughs> but I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? Right. That's not something on my list and maybe someday, but not right now, you know, I'm good. I don't want to summon these things. I don't want to, but you know, I, I kind of have that feeling too. Like, you know, it's just a breath away if we really want to take that breath. Um, right. But, but elaborate on that a little more, if you don't mind. I know you said that you had had some people say that if you developed it more, it would, it would come out more. Uh, just, just, yeah. Elaborate on that a little bit. I, I want to say it was, it's uh, the best thing I can describe. Like it, it's a lot of feelings that I get. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll walk into a place and it could be, I mean, it could be decked out in Valentine's day, you know, Christmas and just be the happiest looking place in the world. And it'll just be a vibe, you know what I mean? And and I'll zone in on it instantly. I'll walk through a threshold and just like my skin just starts to crawl, you know, and just like, I do not want to be here, you know? And uh, it's really just stuff like that. It's not, I've had, and and this is another story that I'll have no problem, you know, I, I'll, you know, I can get deeper into. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But like, you know, I've only had one experience where, or I should say two experiences. And I 
one was like definitely, and the other one I didn't realize it until I looked at footage. Um, that, um, you know, like I was connecting with something, or there was something, you know, directly trying to, you know, reach out to me specifically. Yeah. Um, but like generally, it's just vibes. Like, um, it, it's it's sensations. It's. Um, I think I think a lot of people would call it intuition. Is that a, is okay. that a good word for it? I guess so. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah, and could... intuition is is a lot word for it. You know what I mean? You can read mm. as much into that word as 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 you want. And I'm always I always read the weirdest possible way into it. <laughs> so to me, intuition is just a knowing. It's just a feeling that this is happening or that this emotion is here. The vibes, the instinct. Mm -hmm. Um, but okay, but in partnering that with this dogman sighting, it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear you say, and and you know, before I go to before we go into that, it's it's interesting to to note that you have this feeling because I keep coming back to witnesses. Almost every person I've talked with about this stuff says, you know, if you talk to them long enough, they have these types of feelings. Mm -hmm. So that so that's interesting to note that people that have these these, you know, type of uh, intuition, we'll call it whatever, that they're having paranormal encounters. You know, I think that's that's a that's an interesting note. But in noting that, going back to your dogman sighting, you said that you didn't feel any aggression from it, like it was just an entity that was moving through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and that was like thinking back on it. You know, it's just like kind of boggles my mind in the in the little bit of you know where people have you know expressed that like oh, i had a bigfoot sighting and i got this you know feeling or you know had this mental image or you know this weird you know psychic connection or mm -hmm. whatever it was you know and mm -hmm. i just did not maybe it was either at that point either it was um my body just like so much in shock that it shut it out right or it was purposely trying not to send those vibes out there and try not to interfere you know, in a way yeah you know just like like i don't want to be picked up kind of thing you know yeah. turning off the the signal <laughs> right the signal. right so for sure that's yeah man that, that that part of your story is almost the most interesting part of the story to me because you know with the dog man specifically there is so much uh related to fear and to uh it it hurting someone or and and that case you're I, I i think the one that you're referring to on the last podcast of the of the other guy that or one of the other people that we talked with at Crypticon that had you know the psychic link with these things and mm -hmm. it, the dog man according to him has done some pretty intense damage to his home and his family and all of that um, right but but you know sometimes I wonder if if you know I get I get really into the weird you know deep side of these things I wonder if the the phenomena as we see it doesn't reflect back our intentions you know you know what i mean and mm -hmm. as a kid if you're laying there and and you're not really and you're just shocked if that thing is just as shocked as you are and it's just you know like i'm gonna get out of here now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think yeah I, I and and that's the thing you know um i think it is you know it goes both ways you know mm -hmm. um i think that's what a lot of people's Bigfoot's encounters are like where you know you you've you startled them you know and these are and I would say you know like Bigfoot would be the uh, for lack of a better term you know the apex predator sure. in the woods you know what I mean because like it it's <laughs> it's the hide and seek champion you know what I mean like it's gonna <laughs> only be seen if it really wants to unless you can catch it off guard right um and so uh, yeah, I, I think that that was my case. And, you know, like I just so happened to be awake during the storm, the light flashed and this thing was just trying to book on through. Um, and cause I had, you know, like I had a previous experience where it was, and this was a, probably a year 
year prior, no, about a year or two prior, um, where I had seen, you know, it was like a ghost encounter that I can get into the deeper detail. Absolutely. But, uh, um, before we do that, though, I, I realized I didn't ask you this going through the story. Um, and this is a very simple question, but uh, about how far away approximately would you say this thing was from you? Um, so the window was is not super large. Uh -huh. um, so I'd say at least 20, about 20 feet. So not that far away. I mean, pretty no, close. It was. Yeah, it was close where I could see the whole, like it was close where it fit. It filled the, like the whole frame of that yeah. window. Jeez. Um, that window was probably a solid, you know, three and a half feet by, you know, four feet wide. Like it's a big window, right. you know? Um, so it was close enough to fill that window. I could see its full body and, um, and maybe my guesstimate might be a little off, you know, maybe it sure. was like maybe 30 feet, 35 feet, but it, it was close enough. Close. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Close, close enough. <laughs> um, so, so with it that close, um, with it that close and personal, you know, you noted like the, the color of the fur and all of that. And mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that you didn't note that it was, that there was any gray in it. Um, yeah, I didn't see any, I, I think it may have been young. Yeah, that's you know? that's exactly what I was going to say. Did it? I mean, you know, obviously this is we're dealing with some type of species that we can't really judge on a biological frame. But right. um, but did it appear youthful, you know, as opposed to these other dogman sightings where they're like gray furred and, and ragged and stuff? Um, you know, to to be honest, I I couldn't really sure right. say give or, you know, say either way, um, maybe. You know, it, yeah. maybe it could be just because of the environment. You know sure. what I mean? Maybe, yeah. maybe the gray is more beneficial for you know, like the northern Midwest or right. you know, the dark brown and red might have been uh, better for southern New Jersey. I, I really that is an excellent know. point, man. That is an excellent point. So there you have it, Not Owls, an excellent conversation with N. Conley on this first episode of Transmissions from the Abyss about all manner of strange and supernatural things that uh, N. has encountered throughout his life. And if you enjoyed hearing N. talk to us, you know, he's probably going to show up over on the mainstream sooner rather than later. We're working on getting him as a co-host on some shows because N. really does have a lot of history in the field of paranormal, a lot of different investigations, and is pretty pretty wise in uh, all of these supernatural and paranormal fields. And it was a delight just to get to talk to him uh, about his experiences. We met in at Crypticon, the last one in 2021, and uh, you know he said that uh, he had a lot of experiences. He had he had been through a lot with with uh, all of these different weird worlds that we travel in. Uh, but primarily at the convention, at Crypticon, we spoke about his Dogman encounter, which, you know, once we really got into end stories, his Dogman encounter is a profound, profound encounter with something uh, something not of this world, I think, or, you know, maybe something of, of the uh, strange worlds that live alongside us. But uh, as we get more into end story, you know, it, it really gets stranger and stranger as it goes, which I love. Uh, and I think, you know, just as a little sidebar before we get into it, I think, you know, used to in paranormal when it was, or, or in these fields, when it was less, um, less accepted by the mainstream, less looked into, less was known about it. You know, I think a lot of people were criticized for having multiple encounters and encounters with different things. Uh, different faces of the phenomena, as I call them. And, you know, as I think the studies of these things have gotten more widespread, more people have contributed to them, more people have taken them seriously, I'm, I actually think that uh, people with more and more encounters and different faces of the phenomena are actually maybe more common than people that only have one encounter throughout their life. Um, 
And, you know, that goes to another thing that I always say. There are people that you walk up to and you'll ask if you ever had anything weird happen to you, and they'll say, no, 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 nothing like that ever. But then as you get talking to them, uh, weird stuff starts pouring out. So it's almost like we are all multiple encounters of these weird things. Uh, But, you know, I think for a long time it was frowned upon to talk about different encounters, different things that you've seen, different faces of the phenomena that you've had encounters with. And as I've done this show and as I've, you know, investigated and and been in these fields, it seems like people have encounters with dogmen and UFOs and spook lots and spirits. And to me, uh, you know, it all seems connected in a way. It seems a little too coincidental that people that have these encounters and have these profound encounters are having encounters of all of the different faces and uh, somewhat frequently. Um, but you know, that being said, let's get into, let's get into N's dogman encounter. Uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting aspects of this encounter. N was at Boy Scout camp, uh, the summer of 94. It's late at night. It's storming. There's this long flash of lightning and suddenly there's this entity there. And, uh, you know, N says it's pretty close, um, within 50 feet of him. The, uh, you know, he can see the fur color, um, it's it's standing right there. There is this entity. Um, and, you know, N says that he, he can see the eye shine. It's not glowing. Uh, it's not like the glowing red eyes of the Mothman that we mentioned later on in the show. Uh, but it's, you know, like an eye shine of an apex predator, which I thought was very, very interesting. Um, and then, you know, it's standing right there in front of N. Uh, he's looking at this thing. He's noting the color of the fur. It's reddish brown. Um an interesting fur color because you know oftentimes we hear of of dog men being black or gray fur colored um but uh you know so that's an interesting note and and maybe you know i i'm pretty sure Ian and i talked about this in the in the interview that perhaps this thing was younger perhaps this was a younger specimen of of whatever these canine creatures are um but he's looking at this thing you know and it, and, it, and it appears in this massive flash of light and then it disappears in another second flash, and the entity's gone. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting from a lot of point of views. You know, we hear a lot, or maybe, maybe you know, it, it's taken drawing some strings together on my own, but electricity is a major factor in paranormal encounters. Um, it seems like electricity or places where electric activity is high there are more paranormal encounters. So it's interesting that there's this long flash of lightning, and and, and describes it as the longest flash of lightning he's ever seen, and this entity appears. And it's close enough that N gets sight of it, it's close enough that N can describe it, it's close enough that N uh, is troubled by it for the rest of his life. And then the second flash happens, and it's gone. Um, You know, there's a lot going on there. Um, and, and in, in believes, or, you know, it seems like in sides on that this thing was a physical entity. Um, I don't know what it was. Uh, I don't know if it was a physical entity or a metaphysical entity. And if in believes it's a physical entity, I trust his interpretation. He's the, he's the witness. He's the one who saw it. If he believes it was a earthly entity, then I trust that. Um, but, you know, my interpretation of that thing would be, you know, something happened there. With the electricity, with uh, some type of interdimensional, multidimensional and shit, you guys know me, I'm always going to bring in multidimensional. <laughs> I, I try really hard to stay unbiased with the multidimensional, interdimensional stuff. But, you know, it does seem like in a lot of these cases it echoes that multi-interdimensional thing. So, I don't know. The lightning the lightning thing had me very intrigued. Very, very intrigued. And then, you know, but on the erring on the earthly side. Let's let's talk about this thing being a physical entity for a moment. You know, in mentions that um that not only was this sighting in this area, but there was a map online which in showed me at Crypticon and I took a pretty good look at um that documented two other dogmen sightings within a pretty close proximity, within within a hundred miles of this Boy Scout camp. Um, and sadly, you know, me and Ian were talking back and forth after we recorded this episode. He was going to get me that map, but it's 
it's been taken down as you know we've talked about a lot on this show with things like topics and uh, things like that that keep these sighting records of these sightings seems like they're disappearing a lot these days i don't know what's up with that but uh, it does seem like you know they're either being taken down or something's happening to them but anyway uh, if we can find that map, we'll definitely include it or we'll upload it on the Facebook. But talking about those two separate sightings within 100 miles of, of end sighting, you know, that does kind of establish a apex predator-like range of, of um, uh, hunting ground. Um, and, and that's something that Ian talked about. You know, he, we were talking about apex predators. We were talking about maybe this thing is some type of, of earthly cryptid that just hasn't been discovered or, you know, uh, stays in the woods, stays, stays covered much like, you know, Bigfoot in, in a lot of, um, to a lot of researchers. So, you know, I do think that that's interesting that, that there is that range, that there are those other two sightings that they have occurred within a hundred miles of each other. And, you know, aside from my biases on multidimensional interdimensional shit, Ian does have a really, really good point. And I love that Ian, you know, has that opposing uh, opposing theory because all we're doing here is theorizing, and I want as many theories as possible. and And N does have a very good point about that range of apex uh, range of apex predator. It is interesting that you know there are three separate sightings within a hundred miles of of N sighting. Um, I wish we still had that map. Like I said, we're going to try and find it and upload it for you guys. But uh, you know this this is another example of when you find information, be sure to hold on to it because this has happened to me personally so many times and I thought, ah, I can always go back on the internet and find it. And then I go back and it's either buried at a bottom of a ton of shit or it's just not there anymore. So, um, but uh, one of the most interesting things, uh, you know, and this is getting into the weird, strange territories that I like to immerse myself in when it comes to this, is... Um, Ian's feeling of this thing when he when he sees it, you know, he describes it as uh, maybe feeling a little lost. Maybe it had stumbled uh, across him just like he had stumbled across it. There was no malice, there was no fear, there was no you know uh, intentional uh, aggression, and that's interesting because with a lot of dogmen sightings, we hear about these things being aggressive. Or, uh, you know, at least um, apprehensive in a way. Or not apprehensive, but uh, uh, causing concern in in the very least. And it didn't seem like it did that with Ian. It seems like this thing just kind of stumbled out of the out of the ether or out of its out of its nest or whatever, and uh, crossed paths with Ian. And it didn't know what Ian was as much as Ian didn't know what it was. Um, and you know, there are a lot of sightings like that. There are a lot of sightings of alien beings of uh, reptilian creatures, of uh, dogmen, of sasquatches that are just as surprised that the witness is seeing them than they are seeing the witness. Uh, and I think that that's really interesting. I think that that is a whole side of things that uh, we don't really hear about a lot as well. And, uh, you know, that definitely seems like that means something. If these creatures are surprised to see us, what does that mean? Um, and, you know, there was the freaked out kid there with Ian in the bottom bunk who who saw this thing and uh, Ian says, hey, man, did you see that? And the kid won't talk about it. Uh, and he won't talk about it the next day. He won't talk about it at all. Uh, not even to, to say, you know, man, I didn't see anything. You're crazy. This kid just won't talk about it. Uh, and that's that's an interesting side of things and something, again, that we hear about countlessly with witnesses. You know, friends will see something. Uh, and one of them will talk about it, and one of them will be like, no, I'm never mentioning this again in my life. Um, we saw that with the Water Monsters episode a few weeks back, where you know one of those kids had saw that thing in the Ohio River when they were out uh, target practicing with the 22, and both of them had saw it, but one you know went on to talk about it frequently. He, he wanted the story told, and the other was like, yeah, I'm never mentioning that again, <laughs> never going near the water again. Uh, so, you know, that, that kind of adds a whole other layer to this story. These things have an effect on our emotions, or at least to intuitive people. Like, I firmly believe that Ian is, after hearing all of his stories, 
uh, it it does seem like interactions with this other world or the ethereal or the paranormal or the supernatural they affect our emotions. Uh, you know, aside from being being traumatic, like Anna and I talk about in this episode, um, there's a lot of emotions in the moment. Like I said, though, this uh, this dogman story is why I invited in to come and tell his stories. This story is one of the most interesting dogman encounters I've heard of. You know, just the proximity of the creature. Um, where in saw it, the lightning, all these things we talked about. So again, deeply want to thank Ian for coming on the show. Such a great conversation. Uh, and there's about another hour and a half left of this conversation. There is a lot more to have. Like I said, it gets much, much stranger from there. And it starts out good and weird. Um, you can hear the rest of that conversation over on the Patreon. Uh, there's multiple tiers. I'm I'm kind of starting to switch things up. I think we're going to offer commercial free episodes from this point forward on the mainstream over on the Patreon no matter what tier you're on. So whether you sign up for the $3 a month, give us a coffee tier or, you know, the $20 Not Owls Nest tier, you're going to get free ad-free uh, episodes that from the mainstream. Mainstream episodes ad-free. Um, but you know, even if you don't sign up for the Patreon, even if that's something that you're not interested in, we're still going to do these little 30 minute segments of each of these transmission from the abyss episodes here on the mainstream. So you guys will still get a snippet of something good and weird, uh, between mainstream episodes. And we just appreciate you all listening, no matter where you're listening or, you know, buying merch, whatever you guys are doing, we appreciate it. Thank you for going on these weird journeys with us for our strange Kentucky home. Um, and, you know, check us out on social media. Uh, check us out on the Facebook. Check us out on MidnightKentucky.com. Check out the Ransom Letter Publishing YouTube. Um, we have all of Volume 1 of Midnight Kentucky up over there. And I've got some different ideas on how to do Volume 2. Uh, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Do you want them? Uh, do you want the episodes up as soon as they go on all the other streams, and just do the uh, Sprecher uploads, or do you guys want the drawn out videos? Um, I'm also thinking, you know, we do something like the Sprecher, uh, the Sprecher uploads for the episodes, and then we have other videos that break down the stories that we tell within the episodes uh, that have, you know, photos and and music and all that stuff. Uh, so that's an option, too. Let me know what you guys think. I'm interested to know what you guys think. But all of Volume 1 is up on the Ransom Letter Publishing YouTube now. Uh, check that out. I'll include a link in the show notes. Uh, and there's a lot of other different stuff on Ransom Letter Publishing, and there'll be a lot of different stuff over there as time goes on, other than Midnight Kentucky. But it will always be home to Midnight Kentucky, and you can always find episodes over there. So check that out. And we just launched a few new designs over on the Ransom Letter Publishing uh, T Public, check those out. We've got uh, I saw something strange in Kentucky, and all I got was a stupid T-shirt with a little UFO on it, and the same thing for a sticker. Uh, and then we also have the uh, Bluegrass Cryptid Aquarium logo, uh, which I thought was pretty pretty badass, if I do say so myself. <laughs> but uh, you can get that on a T-shirt, you can get that on a mug, on a sticker, whatever you guys want. Uh, and then we've got the Ransom Letter Publishing Big Cartel coming up. Um, and we've already got uh, items going on over there. Jamie's working hard on those. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff over there, so keep an eye on that. If you guys have any custom orders, you know, get in touch with us. We can do that. Uh, whatever you guys want, we can, we can do it. So uh, be on the lookout for the RLP Big Cartel. As always, leave us ratings and reviews on Facebook, on um, Spotify, on I, Apple iTunes, wherever you can leave those ratings and reviews. It helps so, so, so much. And I saw the other day on Spotify, we have 10 reviews and we're still at five stars. And guys, for real, that touches my heart. That touches my heart. Thank you guys so much. But that's going to do it for this preview of our Patreon-exclusive Transmissions from the Abyss. Again, if you guys want to hear the entire episode, check it out over on our Patreon. But we just love that you guys are listening in any form. Until the next moon rises, night owls, and more transmissions come through. For Midnight in Kentucky and transmissions from the abyss, I'm Ben. Good night. There is a world. There is a world. There is a world. Just on the other side of the one we know. 
It speaks to us in signs and synchronicities, uncanny coincidence, and encounters with that which we believe to be impossible in the realms we call our own. Listen closely, Night Owls. These are transmissions from the abyss. From the abyss. From the abyss. From the abyss. For more from this episode, all of Midnight in Kentucky's exclusive series, merch, and much more, visit patreon.com slash Midnight in Kentucky.